Conclusion A short recap of the entire discussion we had so far right from the accounting process to a petty cash book. We started with an accounting process. The accounting process, we actually have certain source documents. From the source documents, we record in what is called a journal to ledger, ledger to trial balance and from the trial balance, we make final accounts. The journal, if, if we define the accounting, accounting as the art of recording, journal, classifying, ledger and summarizing trial balance and interpreting the results thereof. <clears throat> but recording was done in a significant manner. Those were the rules of debit and credit, double entry, the significant manner was following the rules of double entry. What were the rules of debit and credit? We had two approaches. One was the accounting equation approach, which we said assets are equal to liabilities. We also included incomes and expenses into that and concluded that assets and expenses could be on one side and the other side, we had incomes and liabilities, which included capital. So that we said all increase in asset, all increase in expenses were debits, whereas all increases in income and liabilities were credits. Similarly, a decrease, of course, in asset and expenses would be credit, but a decrease in income and liabilities would be debits. That was the accounting equation approach. On the other hand, we also had a traditional approach. What did the traditional approach say? Traditional approach said accounts are of three types, personal accounts, real accounts, and nominal accounts. Personal accounts dealt with people account, whether individuals, whether natural persons, artificial persons, or even representative personal. What is a representative personal account? An account like an outstanding salary account, which represents the liability, represents the liability of the business to the employee, it represents the employee's account. <clears throat> so personal accounts, real accounts, assets, like cash, furniture, land, building, machinery, etc. And nominal account consisted of expenses and incomes. Then the rule said personal, all personal accounts, for, for personal accounts, the rule was debit the receiver, credit the giver. For real account, the rule was debit what comes in, credit what goes out. And for nominal account, the rule was debit all expenses and losses, credit all incomes and gains. These were known as the golden rules of journalizing. After we knew debit and credit, we moved on to a journal. What was a journal? A journal is a book of original entry wherein all transactions are first recorded following the rules of debit and credit in a chronological manner, date-wise, in a chronological manner, they are first recorded in the journal. <clears throat> Next, they are classified in a ledger. Since transactions are recorded in a chronological order in the journal, it may be difficult to know the total of any particular kind of transaction. For example, if we wanted to know the total purchases for a period, we would have to go through several pages of a journal before we can add up to know what is the total of the purchases. 
so these headings had to be analyzed in a had to be arranged in a more analytical manner and that is what the ledger does so what is a ledger ledger is a book in which all accounts are kept what is an account if we have a purchase account all purchases would be recorded in a purchase account all sales would be recorded in a sales account all rent would be recorded in one place in the rent account <clears throat> so a ledger is a book consisting of all accounts so it facilitates the classification based on the nature of the transaction all cash cash transactions in one place bank transactions in one place all transactions pertaining to x y z in one place all transactions pertaining to a b c in another place <clears throat> a ledger account has two sides the debit and the credit side and at the end of a period the ledger accounts are balanced what is balanced we compare the debit side with the credit side if the debit side is more it's a debit balance if the credit side is more it is a credit balance these balances are then taken to the trial balance the trial balance is nothing but a statement it is not an account it is a statement which contains all the ledger account balances debit and credit since since the accounts are prepared ledger accounts are prepared following the principles of double entry debit total and the credit total of the trial balance would be equal would be same though trial balance can be prepared and the balance method total method and total and balance method the most popular method is to take the balances that is it has debit balances and credit balances of the ledger accounts a statement a, a statement wherein we can view the balances of all ledger accounts next we came to subsidiary books <clears throat> we come to subsidiary books we must also mention that the ledger is the principal book of accounts and subsidiary books are so called because it is from the subsidiary books that the principal book of accounts is maintained <clears throat> the subsidiary books there are some transactions in a business which are very common there'll be many cash transactions there'll be many bank transactions there'll be many credit purchases of goods many credit sales of goods so we have the journal has now been broken up into we have all credit purchases being recorded in one book called the purchase day book all credit sales of goods being recorded in the sales day book all sales return recorded in the sales return journal all purchase return recorded in the purchase return journal all cash transactions and all bank transactions are entered in the cash cash book <clears throat> this the advantage of this is that all transactions of a similar nature for example credit purchases can be viewed together in one place each journal or each book can be kept by different people so there is better division of work greater specialization and since posting from the subsidiary books to the ledger accounts is done in totals and periodically some amount of time is saved since each and every transaction does not have to be posted say to the purchase account or the sales account or the sales return or the purchase return account so subsidiary books are like break up like a subdivision of a journal if the transactions cannot be entered in the cash book purchase day book sales day book purchase return book or sales return book then they are entered in what is called the journal proper journal proper transactions like 
depreciation account depreciation charging depreciation salary is due at the end of the period unexpired expenses <coughs> accrued income credit sale of fixed assets etc are all recorded in the journal book next we also came to cash book which is also a book of original entry and therefore it is a journal but it is also a ledger it is also a ledger because the format is in the ledger form and the cash column and the bank column represent the cash account and the bank account respective accounts have to be posted from the cash book other accounts posting has to be done from the cash book to the other corresponding accounts but the cash account and the bank account is contained in the cash book cash book may be a single column cash book a double column cash book or a triple column cash book triple column would consist of a cash column bank column and a discount column we also looked at a petty cash book what is a petty cash book where cash is given to the petty cashier to meet all day to day small expenses petty expenses a complete separate book is kept and periodically the totals are taken and an accounting entry is passed the petty cash is usually maintained under an impress system so that an impressed amount an amount of say 20000 is decided and once uh, for a 20000 for a month once the month is over whatever money has been spent is reimbursed by the main cashier with that we come to the end of our discussion on the accounting process thank you